Okay, example three, factor 24 plus 6x minus 3x squared. Notice it's ascending order this time. It goes from constant up to the quadratic term. Again, the first thing I would do on my paper, if I see this in my book, is I would transfer it to my paper in descending order, quadratic term followed by linear term followed by constant. The 3x squared is negative, the 6x is positive, the 24 is positive, so the structure of mine's different order, but it's the exact same expression. Okay? Once again, my lead coefficient is negative, it's also 3. Okay? The 3 is a problem, I, don't want, I want 1. The minus sign is also a problem. So let's first of all focus on the 3. Does 3 divide into 6 and 24 evenly? Yes. Yes, that makes it the greatest common factor. All right? So 3 is the greatest common factor of these three objects, but I don't want my lead term to be negative, so I'm going to extract a negative common factor here because of that. Okay? So again, the common factor is found the same way it's always found. What's the biggest number that divides all these numbers? The answer is 3. All right? But the lead coefficient has to be positive. Since it's negative, I'm taking a negative 3 out. So the 3 is going to divide these all by 3, making a 1 and a 2 and an 8, right? But minus the consequence there is all the signs are going to change. So negative 3x squared divided by negative 3 makes positive x squared, which is what we always want, positive 1x squared. 6x divided by negative 3 is negative 2x, and 24 divided by negative 3 is negative 8. Alright? So 3 was necessary, minus was necessary to change the sign, so x squared is positive. Once x squared is positive, I want factors of that number whose sum is that number. And if we make the chart here, factors of and sum, we got negative 8 for factors and negative 2 for a sum. It's the exact same scenario the last problem was. I'm trying to create a negative product, which is opposite sign numbers. We want the sum to be negative, which requires the bigger number to be negative. If I start at 1, 1 times what? 8. 8, and 8 has to be negative, right? 2 times? 4, and 4 has to be negative. 3 doesn't go into 8, 4 we've already gotten, so there's a whole list. Nothing's been left out. 1 plus negative 8 is negative 7. 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. This is the correct pair of numbers, so it is factorable, and we get x plus 2, x minus 4 is the factored form of this part. Negative 3 is still part of the answer because we've already taken that out. So if you have a common factor to take out, make sure that extracts with. Okay. Real quick, just before I go to this next problem, because all these problems have been really simple. We've gotten like two ways to do everything, right? Now, let me just give you an uglier one, just, just for fun. X squared plus, um, let's say, 19X minus 120. Let's go with that one. Nice. Nice. 120. That's ridiculous. That's big. All right, so anyway, I just want, want you to see the, the process here, because I don't think anybody right off the top of their head, hopefully, uh, maybe you can, but probably right off the top of your head, you're probably not going to find that one immediately. So let's just go on that assumption. We can't find that one immediately. We want factors of negative 120 whose sum is positive 19. So... Opposite signs make the negative, right? The bigger number has to be positive so that we get a positive sum, right? So negative 1 times 120, negative 2 times 60, negative 3 times 40, negative 4 times 30, negative 5 times 24, negative 6 times 20, negative 7 doesn't work, negative 8 times 15, negative 9 doesn't work, no, negative 10 times 12, Negative 11 doesn't work. 12 we've already got. There's my whole list. So just like that, we compile this really long list. Again, try 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. And again, if you can't divide them in your head, use a calculator. 120 divided by 5 equals 24. 120 divided by 6 equals 20. All right? If you get a decimal, it doesn't divide evenly, so skip it. So 7 was a decimal, 9 was a decimal, 11 was a decimal. Skip them. All right? There's my whole list. Every possible way to make negative 120 with integers. 119, 58, 37... 26, 19, hey look, 19, you're done. Hey, look, 19. Right. You don't even have to continue on. Once you find the right pair, so this is going to be x minus 5 times x plus 24. Okay. The chart is necessary sometimes. That would be one that would be a little bit more difficult to do just mentally by looking at it. I think a lot of you can probably see right away, oh, negative 4 and 2 will work. And then you just write the answer down. So you haven't used the chart in a while because it's been that easy. You start getting some bigger numbers, just know the chart's still available to you. And again, it finds every possible way of doing it, so you don't leave anything out. So keep that in mind as you're doing this.